Welcome to my studio. I'm Amber Rust, head photographer and owner of Two Color Photography in Brigham City, Utah. We are going to discuss lighting today. Um, probably the most common errors you see in any kind of photography, not just newborn photography, headshots, any kind of photography. If you can light it correctly, you can nail it, but even just a little bit of incorrect lighting can ruin your entire session. So in newborn photography, the biggest faux pas, the biggest no-no on lighting is to light up the nose. You'll hear it frequently on different Facebook pages, websites, but lighting up the nose is basically just that. Your light source is aimed up towards the baby's nostrils and you're literally lighting the baby's nose before any other part of the baby. Uh, the problems with this are a couple, a couple things. We're also lighting the baby's hand. The lightest, the closest part of the baby to the light is going to be the brightest. So her hand is going to be lighter, her chin is going to be brighter, then followed by her lip and her nose. Leaving the top of her head is actually the darkest part of the, of the shot. The reason this is bad is because our eyes are directed towards the lightest part of an image. So if your baby's hand and arm, it would actually be more her forearm than her hand, is closest to the light, your eye is going to be directed continuously back and forth to that bright spot and maybe secondary or third dairy, <laughs> it would be directed to the baby's face, which is what should be your most important. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're, I'm going to show you, I'm going to be kind of mentoring you a little bit. Um, we're just gonna kind of skim over it and I'm going to show you the back of my camera to learn more in depth the lighting patterns and the lighting techniques that are perfect for newborn photography come join us in our Baby Photo Academy courses. We'll have a link to the courses in the description below. Um, and we'll cover so much in depth the different lighting patterns we're looking for, what things are flattering on a newborn and what things are not flattering for a newborn. Um, so we look forward to you following us there. But the first thing we're gonna do, I'm going to take a picture of this incorrect lighting and then I'm gonna hold the camera up so that you can see what is wrong with this lighting and what I want you to look for is where our bright spots are and also where our shadows are because uh, you can't have light without shadows you can't cast light somewhere without there being a shadow somewhere else so we're gonna take a shot angled I'm aiming right at the baby's eyes and we're going to look at this image so before I say anything I want you to study that image where's our bright spots and where are our shadows and where are the dark spots in this image? So because you can't answer me and I can't hear you answer me, I'm going to now point them out. So like I said, our hand is bright. The bottom of her cheek and her chin are bright. The little stuffed animal has a light spot here on her side. And then as we follow that up, you can see, we're gonna zoom in, where our shadows are being cast. So we're getting a shadow here that's coming from the bottom lip or from the lip here, we're getting shadows here and here. And those are being cast, the cheeks are creating a shadow here and here. We're also getting a terrible shadow. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Uh, not even a shadow, the whole body is casting a shadow on the top of the baby's head. So if our eyes, if you were to close your eyes, let me see if I can just zoom in just a tiny bit. This is the Canon EOS R and I really love the touch screen for this. Um, being able to zoom in and out like that. If we look at that image and close your eyes and then open your eyes again, maybe I'll zoom out so you can see the whole image. The first thing your eye is going to go to is the hand and the cheek and the chin. And maybe even that bright spot on the fabric where the important part to that mom is not the little sheep, it's not the fabric. The important part to that mom is the baby's face. We're gonna move the light over. And we're going to shoot, I'm raise it up a tiny bit so that I'm not lighting the fabric as much as we were in the last shot. And I'm even going to turn the light away a tiny bit because what's going to happen is your light's going to come and kind of throw itself off of the edge. I don't want necessarily bright, bright direct lighting um, because again, I'm gonna get a hot spot on the blanket 
the face will be fine, but I'm just, I'm just trying to control where my lighting's going. So I'm gonna do this and we're gonna do a test shot. I may be completely wrong. I may be, you may have to change it. You get to see me do it and I'm gonna have to duck so I'm not blocking my own light. We're gonna look at our lighting here and I'm gonna zoom in and we're gonna, we're gonna look at where those highlights are and we're gonna look at where our shadows are. So obviously the forehead has a little bit of a highlight on it. Um, but if we look at our shadows, so much more flattering, don't you think? So we're gonna zoom in a little bit. We've got a tiny little shadow right under the bridge of the baby's nose and that's actually a lighting pattern um, called a butterfly lighting. You can look that up online. Um, we can also, if we zoom in a little bit closer, there's a tiny little bit of a shadow there that would be almost a loop lighting pattern and the little chin, the little dimple. But in this case, it accentuates the dimple, so we're okay. Um, our hand is no longer bright. We've got a little bit of brightness here on the fabric, but not so much as what was over here. So turning our light a little bit, lifting it higher than the baby, and shooting down at the baby gave us a much more flattering lighting. So we're gonna take one more, and I'm just gonna do the more direct lighting because I shoot like this sometimes too, depending on my fabric. I just don't want the stars to be the, the absolute winner of the day. So we're just gonna see what the difference looks like here. So our fabric's a lot brighter, the forehead's a lot brighter. We're gonna zoom over to that one. Same power, same settings, just the way you tilt the light. So our hot spot here isn't as bright. The even lighting on the sheep is a little bit better and the forehead lighting is a little bit more controlled. So that's what I would look for when you're lighting a baby. Never, 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 never. And I can't say never enough times light up a baby's nose. What if you're a natural light photographer? So I'm gonna shut this off for a minute. So if we're shooting natural light, like my wall of windows here, and we're getting a little dark, but we're just gonna, for the sake of today, we're gonna open this up. And I'm just gonna talk you through nose lighting and the correct lighting for a newborn. So if I were to keep her here, I'm gonna tip her in a little bit more so that where that light is shooting up her nose. And also, don't ninja your headbands, please. And I'm gonna move my padding. If you wanna learn how we're doing our padding, come to our Baby Photo Academy courses, and we'll talk more in depth about how this padding impacts our session. Okay, so now if we look at our wall of windows and our baby, again, right up the baby's nose. So we're gonna take our transmitter off of the camera, and I'm going to have to make some adjustments to my exposure because I don't have strobe light anymore. So let's see how close I was. Here we go, the same problem. Uh, shadows in the eyes, the elbow, the cheek, the chin, even the little, little tiny piece of the hand there are getting the bulk of our lighting and it's just not a flattering lighting. If we're to zoom out a little bit, the fabric's really bright here. Uh, sadly, with natural lighting, unless you use a diffuser, somehow on the window, we're not gonna be able to control that lighting very much. So let's just turn that baby. Just like we, we can't turn the light like we did before because natural lighting can't move the windows. So we're just gonna tip her the other way. Thank heavens for stand-in baby so that I don't have to worry about waking up this poor baby. And we're gonna move our posing fabric so she's got little pillow to place her head on. Bring it down a little bit. And I'm tipping her head in so that she's still getting the light from that row of windows. And we're going to purposely place the feet. And because I yanked my clamp loose, we're just going to reclamp our fabric. So my lighting shouldn't really change. It might be a little bit brighter in this image because I've got her head about a foot closer to my light source. So we're going to see, um, I might decrease my ISO by one stop. And if you don't know what I mean when I say one stop, and you talk about aperture and lighting and stops and all of that stuff very in depth in our course. So we're gonna come in. We're gonna shoot that image and we're gonna see what it looks like. So we've got a little bit of bright spot here, 
but our shadows look a lot better. Our hands are no longer the brightest point of the image. Um, if we scroll over here, just that lighting pattern in the face is what we're looking for. So if we come back over here, it's softer lighting. We've got that loop lighting on the baby's nose um, and the little dimple on her chin and the softer lighting on her hands. So this can be done, you know, on a natural light source, strobes, continuous lighting, just that same thing that you need to do before you set up any newborn. Think of where your light source is and think of what is the most important part of that baby that needs to be lit and then set up your pose from there. Just remember, nostrils never need to be lit. So like this video, subscribe to our channel and click the little bell so you get notifications for when we post new videos. Thank you for stopping by.